It's a story created with many hands. In different languages. In many different lands. It's a story about celebrating heritage and breaking new ground. Of making friends and building partnerships. It's a story about discovery and renewal. Of looking forward and honoring the past. It's the story of a company that cares about the way we work and the lives we touch every day. We are Gold Corp, and this is our story. It takes many skilled men and women to operate a mine, but it takes an entire community to make it flourish. In 2013, Gold Corp signed a landmark agreement recognizing the long-term partnership between Gold Corp and Laxol First Nation. A little over five years ago, we all mutually committed to each other that we would get to an agreement. There was times I believe we all wanted to quit and throw in the towel. It would have been a lot easier. But uh, to everybody's credit, uh, everybody stayed true to the course. What I'm most proud of so far is the fact that we were able to turn uh, a relationship that was somewhat adversarial at the very early stages into something that was very collaborative. You have to have a conversation that is, in some ways, exposes yourself to the other side and be, be brave enough to have that conversation. This was never done that a First Nation and in industry would sit down to talk about an impact benefit agreement and, and that's, that is a true partnership that we have achieved. I think in the end Gold Corp has evolved and is much more willing to listen and put the lens of the community onto itself. The highest hope that I have is that the youth that are out there now and the ones that will be born in the coming years will actually take the opportunities that they've got presented to them, the ones that we work for. We're very happy and this is a proud day for myself, my council, my members. I mean, it's just a tremendous day for Laxo First Nation. Education is the key to opening doors of opportunity. That's why, in partnership with PDAC, Gold Corp helped extend the reach of an innovative summer camp called Mining Matters to Aboriginal youth in remote communities. Uh, so Mining Matters came to be about five years ago. We started out with just one camp. Over the past five years, we've grown to about 23 camps. My favorite is definitely the kids. Um, sometimes they can be a little crazy and so energetic, but they always, uh, they always come out of the day learning something. My name's Megan and I'm seven years old. I didn't know that fossils broke so easily and rocks were, were like sandpaper and limestone. They pick up a lot of messages really quickly. Even a five-year-old can say hematite and magnetite and that's really something. And learning how to use a GPS and a compass and showing me all of that, like, that really, um, I think that's probably one of the highlights. I think education is really important and being able to bring it to these kids is definitely something I'm really proud of to be doing right now. A key ingredient to our success is in growing partnerships. In 2013, Windigo Catering, a company operating out of our Muscle White Mine, won the prestigious Skookum Gym Award for exceptional achievement. If it's one thing, we're known for our food. I'm very proud of what they do. Um, consistently, we have great workers. We don't take any shortcuts. I, myself, I do bannock for the staff he, he once does, in a while. He has some amazing bannock. We do wild boar. We, do, uh, we have pickerel when we can. We've done duck. Bison, we use uh, quite a bit bison. of bison. So. They seem to like it, they seem to really like it. And we've grown in our ranks from anywhere between 12 and 14 people all the way through around, I think we're at 115 now. The Aboriginal people here um, make up around anywhere between 86 and 90 percent of our overall uh, workforce. 96 is our highest, which we're at currently right now. We recently took home the honour of the Jim Skookum Award, uh, which is Aboriginal impact on mining as a whole. Um, it's really allowed us to get our foot in the door with a couple different businesses, and it's helped our, our business grow outside of the mine site. It was a very prestigious award to win, you know, like um, it doesn't 
doesn't happen a lot, and, and it's a very good feeling as a company yeah. to be able to win something like that. Because we live on site and we live in close quarters, we don't just have customers, we have friends, we have people that are part of a community. Uh, I like working for an Aboriginal company, and you know, there's lots of opportunity in the future, and I look forward to seeing where that's going to go. A hundred years ago, mining had a very different face and reputation. Today, mining is a highly sophisticated and progressive industry. The attitude, particularly in environmental stewardship, has changed uh, significantly during my career. It's uh, integrated into the way we do our business. It's not something separate from the way we do our business. It's part of the way we do our business. The Ripple Effect uh, was a slogan contest that we had really to express the vision of our new sustainability excellence management system. Virtually every employee uh, in the company participated, every operation participated, and ultimately the winning slogan was our planet, our choices, our legacy, which really expresses the vision of Gold Corp's environmental stewardship. Nowhere has that evolution been more dramatic than in Timmins, Ontario. Here, some of the industry's boldest environmental innovations are being developed, ideas that are changing the way the world looks at mining. The uh, Hollinger property itself started in 1910. It was at the time the biggest gold mine in the uh, British Empire. It operated as an underground mine until 1968. And then in the 1980s, it operated as small open pits. The legacy of the Hollinger project itself and the, and the property is that there are a lot of holes there left behind from the mining of the open pits. Basically, it's an area that's unusable to the public. The reclamation plan started about seven years ago. A group of people came together and looked at what can be done uh, to that property. Uh, ideas were formulated and the idea to mine out the voids for reclamation was done. Here we have right in the heart of our community an opportunity to make it look uh, like something spectacular. To be able to create a place where you can do recreation uh, probably five or ten minutes from anywhere in Timmins. Being able to take the gold potential that's there and repair these hazards, it will be again uh, something that the city has long waited for. It was important for Gold Corp to leave a legacy. Uh, recreation trails opportunity was very important to the community and Gold Corp listened and has acted. It is the choices we make today that are gonna leave a legacy behind for those future generations. Everybody within Gold Corp has a role to play in environmental stewardship as expressed by our vision, our planet, our choices, our legacy. But long term, a success to me is when everybody, all of our employees, are the environmental professionals uh, that, uh, that are living the vision. Of all our company values, none is more important than safety. That's why we took the unprecedented step of shutting down our entire company for one day, to honor those who we have lost, and to reaffirm our commitment to creating a workplace that is safe enough for our families. The Day of Remembrance, October 30th, 2013. I think that when we all look back at that date. It will be a point in time that really changed the culture of Gold Corp and in upped our game in terms of the way we go about keeping our people safe enough for their families. The Day of Remembrance was designed to accomplish several things. First, to stop what we were doing, to take time to remember those that we've lost at Gold Corp. The second purpose was, uh, as I said, to stop what we were doing and make sure everybody understands the importance of improving the way we go about our daily business so that we don't have fatalities in the future. I talked to miners that have spent 20, 30 years in the business, and they said they had never really seen a company shut everything down and really put it on the line that we are going to fight these fatalities and we're gonna do something about it. Every single employee, they were focused on safety that day and not just on their safety but considering the safety of every single person involved at Gold Corp. The messages that came from some of our families that have lost loved ones hit everybody right where we need to be hit in our emotions and, and the fact that we care and that we need to change. Our number one objective as an organization above everything else is to have zero fatalities and we had failed in that objective and it was clear that we needed to do more and that we need to do more in order to meet that very important goal. I want us all to look back on October 30th, 2013 as being a day of remembrance, but a day of looking forward as well. We should be able to look back and reflect on what each one of us has done, what our personal commitment was to improve safety at Gold Corp.
Safety starts with preparation, anticipating issues before they happen, and training our people to be ready if they do. That's why we brought together the rescue teams from every Gold Corp operation for our first international mine rescue summit. Yo creo que es un que la seguridad es un lenguaje universal. Nosotros nos entrenamos para estar listos para para una emergencia, pero no es la idea que ocurra una emergencia. We've proven throughout history that without emergency response programs in place, disasters happen. Es algo que tiene que ser eh, un valor o una decisión propia. Nadie nos obliga a pertenecer a la brigada, sino simplemente lo hacemos por gusto y porque queremos y sabemos que algún día podemos salvar una o muchas vidas. On doit apprendre à dealer avec, à négocier avec euh, des, des équipes du Mexique, l'Argentine. Euh, donc, euh, va vraiment falloir aller chercher le meilleur de chacun. This event and this summit is an opportunity to bring our families together, to teach each other, to show them that we care to show them that we can make a difference in the workplace and that we can be safer. These individuals will be going back to their workplaces safer and more knowledgeable. They will have the opportunity to avoid being in accidents in the first place. If everybody comes here and learns one thing and we save one life, it'll be successful. Pero todo cambio se genera de algo microscópico. Y si vamos juntando de micro en micro, podemos crear el, un cambio y que deseamos, algo en, enorme, no solamente una mina, sino una empresa o simplemente toda una industria que podemos cambiar la visión de seguridad. People often describe the culture of Gold Corp as being like a family, a place of friendship, support and camaraderie. Gold Corp's vision is to create sustainable value wherever we operate, and that includes uh, in and around the communities where we have mines. It includes our head office in Vancouver. And so we look for opportunities to seek out the, the marginalized, the people who really need the help, and Special Olympics has been one of those opportunities for us. It's just so rewarding to be able to uh, sponsor these athletes, and if you've ever been to a Special Olympics event, you'll know what I mean. It's just absolutely fantastic to watch them compete and learn and grow, and, and we're happy to be a part of that. In July 2014, Vancouver will play host to the Canadian Special Olympics. And in Red Lake, Gold Corp employees Diana and Sean Parthenay share a special connection to this cause through their son, Zachary. Sean actually was my high school sweetheart. I uh, met him when I was 16, engaged by 20, married 21, and baby at 22. Zachary, he's 20. He's uh, a really special little man. He's the joy in our life. Uh, he's 20 years old, Down syndrome. Um, we knew he was going to be Down when I was carrying him, and we were up for the challenge, and it's been the best decision of our life. Sean is big in hockey, and uh, always wanted a son to play hockey, and we thought, oh, we're going to raise the, the first Down syndrome NHL star. Um, but Zach had his own plan. There was a guy at work, an older fellow. He had this little Special Olympics bowling group. So Zach joined when he was about eight, and he loved it. He loved it right from the start. The coach had decided to retire because he was doing it for many years. So Sean and I stepped in. I'm, I try to be their coach, but it's, it's pretty hard coaching them when, they can, when you know they can kick your butt. <laughs> My name is Zach. I like to play bowling. I fight good for When I saw Don Jerry, and maybe I win the gold. My favorite part. There's that guy, that guy's messments, is in Zachary Posny. And then, John Emil, Zach's the winner, and then, in a trophy. When I watch Zach compete, it, it gives me a sense of pride for myself, knowing that he's out there, he's having a good time. And seeing Sean there with him, I just love it, because it gives me, it's almost a double. I'm so proud of Zach but I'm also proud of him that he has that with his son. I think Zach being a part of Special Olympics gives him a sense of being on a team, also a sense of self-confidence. He knows that he can do this. He gets uh, acknowledgement from it. He's the Brad Pitt of Red Lake area, this kid. <laughs> yeah, it's great. This, this is a superb town. It's about the Olympics coming up. I will stay focused in the mail. And I want to 
Can I just read some my Bible saying about Boeing? Said, all the meal, I'll be happy. On Zachary's journey, I think he's just touching the base of what he can do. He's a phenomenal kid. Is there a motto we live by? Live for today. Don't sweat the little stuff. It's all about family. At Gold Corp, we take care of our environment, our community, and our people. Why do we care so much about these things? Because when you take care of people, you take care of business. And that's what we do every day, in a thousand different ways, with a thousand different stories. We are Gold Corp.